And we have to stop letting people get away by playing to our humanity as African people. We are... Okay, you need that for the camera. No, no, no. I don't need it. Give me the sun. I'm African. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah. And I'm a Leo, by the way. Ah, Jehovah. I'm a son of the Ah, Heru. Ah, Heru. Brothers and sisters, when I read the South African Constitution, it bothers me to read that the Constitution of South Africa says South Africa belongs to everybody who lives in it. I know of no other country where a thief or an invader or a colonizer can come and steal and rob and then be welcome to stay as a member of the family. I never heard of that. What good is a flag in an anthem if we don't control the resources? Mm. What good is a vote in a democracy yeah, where the diamonds are not mine? Ooh. The oil is not mine. The gold is not yeah. mine. Brothers and sisters, please don't fall for the illusion of European democracy. If voting could change your reality, voting would be illegal. Exactly. Yeah, in America, is. they have brainwashed yes. us into worrying about who gets elected. Whether it's Donald Trump, whether it's Joe Biden, it doesn't matter because no matter who we vote for, the resources remain in the hands of the white power structure. Yes. One day, and it may not be tomorrow, it may be years from now, it may be decades from now, but there will have to be a second revolution in African soil to undo the mistakes of the first revolution. I would hate yes. for any more blood to be shed. Yes. I would hate for you to have to go through what you went through in bringing about the demise of apartheid. But because of bad deals made yes. by African people in secret rooms with white people, yes. because of deals yes. that were cut without your knowledge, yes. the yes. victories that we thought we got in South Africa, we did not get them. And so one day there has to be another revolution. Yes. Not just South Africa, but Nigeria. Not just Nigeria, but Ghana and the yes. Congo all over the continent because everything we won in war, we gave back in negotiations. Mm. Now I dare say, as I speak with some of my brothers and sisters in South Africa, some of them like to step on the name of Madiba Nelson Mandela. I look at it a little differently. I do not put Nelson Mandela in a category with Barack Obama because young Nelson Mandela did fight for his people. Young Nelson Mandela was ready to give his life for his people. I understand the older Nelson Mandela was compromised. Yes. But I blame you more than him because we had no business taking an elder 27 years in prison and thinking he's going to pick up where he left off 27 years later. That was on us. We cannot have a cult of personality. No one man is greater than the community. No one woman is greater than the community. We have to get out of the mindset, the Jesus Christ mentality, not the religion, but the belief that one savior is going to save all of Africa. No, the people will save South Africa. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, I understand you all have an election next year. You have your EFF, you have your ANC, you have your DA, you have your various parties. But I dare say, sit down with each political party and ask them, what are you really going to change? We don't just need a voice. We need a party that's gonna bring the resources back to the people. What good is getting a college education if you can't even get a job when you're done? What good is voting for a president when you look around and the Chinese have more control of South Africa than the South Africans. Yes. The East Indian has more control over South Africa than the South African. The European has more control over South Africa than the South African, I dare say. Anyone who wants to represent the South African people must do three things. If I were a citizen here, I'm only voting under three conditions. Number one. What are you going to do to economically empower the brothers and sisters in South Africa so they can compete 
with the Chinese, the Asian, the Arab, the Anglo-Saxon for economic control of this country. If you're not going to give me economic opportunity, what good is my vote to you? Yes. You must give us economic opportunity, not just festivals, but opportunity. Because when a Chinese come to South Africa, he comes with a line of credit from China. Yes. When the Indian comes to South Africa, he comes with a line of credit from India. When a European comes to South Africa, he comes with a line of credit from Holland or England. So if we're going to compete and open up businesses, if we're going to open up shops, if we want to make our own computers, if we want to build our own cars, we need a line of credit to do that. And the racist apartheid banks of mm. South Africa are not mm. going to do that because they want to keep us on the bottom. Yeah. So if you're not giving us economic opportunity, you too are keeping us on the bottom. Mm. Follow the money. Follow the resources. Number two. I'm only going to vote for you if you are absolutely committed to redistribution of the wealth of South Africa. Yes. Redistribution. Because what they have, they obtained unfairly. It does not belong to them. Yes. So unless you redistribute the wealth of South Africa, black South Africa will never get a chance to enjoy heaven in their own homeland. And thirdly, African people. The indigenous South African must be a protected category, not mixed in with no other group. I understand that they now lump Chinese in or Asians in with black people. How can you do that? Black is black. It's not brown. It's not yellow. It's not red. It's not white. Black is black. So until you treat the South African as separate and special from everyone else, until there is an advantage for me being in my own land above and beyond anybody else, don't you dare call me a participant in your democracy. Brothers and sisters, don't get caught up in the campaign chants. Don't get caught up in the campaign and political loyalties. Look long term at the vision of Africa. I want to say this. I believe that the world will never run the way the world is supposed to run until African people are back on top. We're the only people in human history who ever ran this planet with justice. The white man has been in charge for 500 years. He's never ruled with justice. The Chinese are incapable of ruling in justice. The East Indian can't rule in justice. Only the African can rule in justice, brothers and sisters. And because of that, I think that one day there will be a global African revolution. Mm. Not just South Africa, not just Congo, mm -hmm. not just the United States, yes. not just Brazil, not just Jamaica. But all of us are going to have to raise up and fight together as one race against all the other forces. Mm -hmm. Because you need to understand yes. this. African people, we have no friends, brothers and sisters. Yes. We have no friends in America that try to sell us the Latino. In America, they try to sell us this multicultural vision of all non-white people being one people. That is a lie and a scam and a trap. Yes. Do not unite with the Chinese. They don't have your best interest. Do not unite with the Indian. They don't have your best interest. Do not unite with the Arab. They don't have your best interest. Brothers and sisters, hate nobody, but loyalty must be with yourself. My expertise is psychology, education, political science. I'm a doctor of clinical psychology. I'm a certified school psychologist. I'm an educator. If there's anything I can do for the South African family, whether it's create a mental health system, as the queen said, we got to heal, brothers and sisters. Too many of us are wounded warriors. Yes. Yes. You cannot fight the white man and be at war with yes. yourself. Yes. Suicide in South Africa no, is no. up. Homicide, our young brothers killing each other from America to South Africa. That's pain. That's hurt. That's trauma. And if there's any way I can be a part of any mental health system to help our young people and older people heal from the tragedies and trials of life, make use of me. If we need to build an independent school in Soweto, the Steve Biko Academy, make use of me. Yes. The Chris Honey Academy, make use of me. Whatever we got to do, call on me to bring my expertise. And I'm not alone. 
We got armies of Pan-Africanists back home in America who are willing to come and back home in the Caribbean who are willing to come and back home in Canada and South America who are willing to come. But if anything I can do to help, mm. I am part of the family. As Baba said, I'm not visiting home, yes. I am home. Yes. Aman La! Africa! Yeah. Brothers and sisters. African Liberation Day does not speak to the culmination of all the works we've done towards African emancipation globally, but it speaks to all the work that still needs to be done. Uh, we are not where we need to be. And I think too often as African people, we tend to take our foot off the gas. We tend to celebrate achievements that have not yet crystallized. We tend to honor agreements with non-African people that are never upheld. And I think that a lot of us have grown a little lazy, revolutionarily speaking, where we are content with superficial achievement, but not substantive changes. And when I look across the diaspora, I see too much superficial celebration and not enough substantive change. Uh, when I was in Aruba last month, in Bonaire, in Carousel, the Dutch West Indies, it was announced that the King of Holland was going to apologize to Africans in the Dutch West Indies within the Caribbean for slavery. And I said, why are African people so content with receiving an apology for the worst human abuse in recorded history. Why can the white man just say sorry and everything is all right? The European Jews didn't let the Germans say sorry. Yes. They made them pay reparations, restitution. If they found a single Nazi, they were prosecuted and imprisoned. But when we come to South Africa, they gave us a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Just tell people what you did wrong during apartheid and you will go free. That's not acceptable. African blood is not cheap. And we have to stop letting people get away by playing to our humanity as African people. We are... Okay, you need that for the camera. No, no. I don't need it. Give me the sun. I'm African. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. And I'm a Leo, by the way. Ah, Jehovah. I'm a son of the Ah, Heru. Ah, Heru. Ah, Heru. But you know, it's funny because back home in America, you do have some of your American African brothers and sisters. Mm. Not all, but a few who don't like to be under the sun. Because the white man has convinced us that black is something evil, that black is something ugly, that black is something unattractive, which is ironic because when you go to court, the judge puts on a black robe. When you graduate, you put on a black robe. When you go to church, it's a black robe. So if black is evil and ugly, why do you use that color to represent the greatest achievements in your society? Truth of the matter is that the white man, the brown man, the yellow man, they know that blackness is divinity. Blackness is our spiritual heritage. Don't be afraid to get dark. Melanin is a power, not just the color, this is not color. This is energy, brothers and sisters. And it is an energy that connects us to supreme consciousness. Sure, white people can pray, but nobody can pray like African people can pray. <laughs> Chinese can meditate, but nobody can meditate like African people can meditate. Why? The melanin is a spiritual molecule that gives us a special relationship with Almighty God. Remember, every prophet of every religion was blue, black, purple. 
God never sent a white man as a savior. He never sent the yellow man as a savior. He never sent the brown man as a savior. Every savior was an African, yes. mm. including Jesus the Christ, mm. who was born of the tribe of Judah, the blackest of the 12 tribes of Israel, mm. who hid out in Egypt, land of the blacks. Every statue of Jesus, every coin of Jesus, every painting of Jesus, up until the incursion of the European shown Jesus as a blue, black, purple African man. So we got to see divinity in ourselves because I tell you, brothers and sisters, until we achieve psychological liberation, my field is psychology, the study of the mind. Until we know we are as good as everyone else, we will never be as good as everyone else. We have to admit that the white man has put into African people globally an inferiority complex. It's still with us. And until we the Caucasian living inside of us, until we exercise the white man inside of you, we will never be victorious over the white man outside of you. Black power. Mm -hmm.